everyone. Welcome back to another session of Flow Builder Practice Set series. So in this particular video, we are going to talk about de deep cloning. So in the previous sessions, we saw how you can clone a single uh, record in Salesforce using the lightning flows. And we also uh, checked out that how you can clone multiple records using the flows, right? So this one is about deep cloning. Deep cloning means, let's say, for example, let's say you want to clone an account and along with the account, you also want to clone some of its child records, right? So that is nothing but deep cloning. So for example, if there is one account and it has, let's say like, you know, five, 10, or could be like, you know, 20 or 50 accounts that are associated to, sorry, contacts. And those are associated to that particular account. So when you're cloning the account, you will be cloning the account as well as those 20, 30, or whatever the contacts that are associated on that account, you want to clone those contacts as well, right? So that is nothing but deep cloning. So let's just go ahead and check that how we can do it. So I'll go ahead and create a flow. So we are going to create a screen flow. Let's switch it to a free form. And as always in these cases, let's just create a screen and I'm going to give some property to the screen. And I will first ask the user whether they want to clone the account and contacts or not. All right, so here I would be using a display text. Here, uh, user confirmation. associated contacts all right just this confirmation message and let's just click on done okay <clears throat> so this is the first screen where we would be asking user whether they want to clone the account and its associated contacts or not and after this if you guys remember if let's say if i'm on this account and if i want to clone this account then i would be needing the account record id right because <clears throat> Uh, when while cloning the account basically that is nothing but in flow creating the account right and when you're creating the account you would be needing this account record id reference because using this you would be able to access all the other fields that you actually want to clone right so for example in this one i would want to let's say i want to clone the account name and account phone number right and how would I get the account name and account phone number? I would get the I would get these fields if I have the account record ID so that using the account record ID, I can get or you can say I can fetch this account details so that I can use those details while cloning this account record, right? While creating the account record. All right. So, <clears throat> okay. And another point is that when I'm cloning this account, I don't want to keep the same name. So I would be creating another screen where I will give the flexibility to user so that they can provide another account name, like, you know, whatever they want so that they can, they will be able to differentiate which was the original account and which is the cloned one. All right. So let's go back here. So first of all, let me just like, you know, fetch the account record. So to get the current page account or like, you know, to get the current page, current page record ID, you have to create another variable and you have to give the API name as record ID. I hope you guys remember that. If not, you can just uh, check that here right away. So you have to go to manager, click on new resource, create a variable and name it as record ID. You cannot keep it as something else. If you want the current page record ID, right? Wherever you are onto, then you have to use this API name, okay? Record ID, data type would be text and then available for input and done, okay? So I have this now I'm going to fetch that account record okay so get account sorry get account record okay here object is account and which is the account that i actually want to fetch if you guys remember this is nothing but like a sockel query right and while getting the record from the salesforce you need to tell that which account record you're trying to fetch so let's say for example i want to fetch this particular account because let's say if i have kept an action button here and i am launching my screen flow from here then i would want to refer this particular account right this particular account record id so this record id i have stored into a variable that i just created right record id so here i have to put that condition where id is equals to record id where i have kept the current page 
record id okay so this is how you can get the account record current account record okay and one record and this is fine and click on done so i have the account records now before creating the clone record right before cloning that account i want to give another screen the one that we talked about where i would be giving the flexibility to use it in order to like you know overwrite the name or if there is any other field that you actually want to overwrite before you clone the record then those fields also you can keep on the screen so um um user screen to this is just the screen properties <clears throat> display no not display text we need text right because i want to create an account name field here so account name <clears throat> all right and this is done so this screen will ask the user to enter the account name all right so I am asking for the confirmation from user if they want to clone the account and the associated contacts, then I'm fetching the account record, okay, using the record ID variable that I've created here, right, this one, and then I'm adding another screen where I'm asking the user that they have to provide an account name, okay, so, okay, once I have this, I can go ahead and create the account record, so, create, clone, account, all right, here one record and I would be using my resources that I've created account and set fields for the account. Okay. So in account, I name field is mandatory. So we have to map the name field. Okay. And apart from name, let's just also map phone field. Okay. So for name field, search for name, account name should be actually, so account name from where you will be actually mapping the account name. So there are two places, right? Again, we have discussed this before, if you remember. So account name is available on the get records element where like, you know, in the step three, where you're actually fetching the account record side. So either you can use that, this one, right? Record single variable, right? This is where you have the account details that you actually queried from Salesforce, right? But we have also created a screen where we are asking user to manually enter the account name, right? And that is the name field that I want to map here. Okay, because I want to, when the clone record of account is created, I want the name to be displayed as the name that user has given on the screen, okay? So search for name and this is, see, this will be available under screen components, right? So account name and now let's just add phone and phone will pick up from the account get records results, okay, here and phone. Let's just add one more annual revenue. This also we can pick from here. All right. And okay. So another thing. So when this account record is created, this will um uh, this will get an auto-generated account record ID, right? Salesforce will provide an account record ID, right? And moving forward in this flow, when we will plan or we will move ahead with creating the contacts, so you would, how would you create those contacts, right? So there are a few points that you have to keep in mind. The first thing is that flow needs to know that where is that place from where you want to clone the contacts, right? So, what we'll do is we will, this account, right? This cloned account, whatever is getting created, we will store its ID into a variable, okay? So in that particular variable, we have this accounts ID, cloned record accounts ID, right? So on this cloned record accounts ID, when we are associate, when we are cloning the contacts or you can say creating the contacts, we can attach those contacts on this account ID, right? So that is, that is how a whole replica of account and its associated context will be created, right? Otherwise, you will just create the context, but those will be often context, right? Those are not going to be associated to your cloned account. So that is why I know that this step is going to create a cloned account. So that is why I want to store the account ID of this particular account so that when I'm, when I'll be creating the cloned contacts, I will associate those contacts to this particular account ID. All right. So here, um, manually assign values and here let's just create a resource. Okay. Uh, variable API name, just say where account ID of cloned account. I mean, so any, anything, whatever it is like, you know, uh, so, and it is going to be a text. 
and that's it i'm done all right we'll just have to like you know remember this or i mean you can also check it in the manager uh manager and the manager tab so let's just click on done okay so now we have the now we have created the cloned accounts right what is the next step the next step is to fetch the contacts and how will you fetch the contacts so if you guys remember this record id variable that we have created this is nothing but for example if you are onto this account this is the account id record right this is the account record id and when you actually query salesforce let's say if i want to fetch all the contacts of one related account how do i write a SQL query select id name comma account id from contacts right so on contact object there's a field called account id okay and this is nothing but the account id and where are you storing this you are storing this here correct so when i want to fetch the related records related contact records of this particular account whatever i am currently on to i can use this record id right which is nothing but the account id in order to fetch those contacts correct so let's just go ahead and drag get records so get records fetch contacts and here object is going to be contact all right and here on contact i just told you right that on contact there's a field called account id so account id this is like a SQL query right where account id is equals to what record id right the field that we have the variable that we have created so record id so record id okay so it is going to return me the contacts where account id is equals to the record id so if let's say on this account let's say there are two contacts right so this particular get records is going to return me these two contacts all right so here and then uh, all records right because there are multiple contacts and uh, that's it click on done all right okay so now we uh, okay, so we have the user confirmation asking whether they want to clone the account and associated contacts, then we fetch the account and then we uh, gave the account name so that user can replace the account name or override the account name, then we created the cloned account uh, record right, and also we have stored that cloned record account ID value right in a variable called where account ID. All right, and then we have fetched all the contacts. Now we have to create the clone of these contacts, right? Now these are like, you know, multiple contacts, right? Because one account can have multiple contacts, right? So if you remember again, right? If there are multiple records, then you have to create a loop and you have to iterate through that loop and you have to create two variables. The first variable is going to st store the, uh, like, you know, it will be like a single record instance variable, right? So. Uh, when your loop will iterate through each and every contact, let's say in this case, if it has two contacts, so every, like with every iteration, I want to store the contact details, right? So for to store, for storing that contact details, I would be creating one variable. And then also I would be creating another collection variable. So with every loop that actually happens on these contacts, I would be adding those single contact record instance to that collection variable and once the loop gets completed after coming out of the loop i'm just going to create those contacts right because inside the loop i cannot make any kind of dml operation it is not suggestible and you should not do it all right so um, let's just go ahead and create a loop so iterate through contacts All right and what is the collection variable collection variable is this because this is where we have fetched all the contacts right and first item to last item which is okay and let me just and i want to just keep it a little let me just arrange this so that we'll have some space here this is all about sorry what did i just do create okay get records this is fine and then i have created a loop here okay now the loop has started okay so loop if I'm, I'm just going to take the same example right so it it has two contacts so the, in the first iteration loop is going to give you this contact right now we are going to store this contact into that single variable that we would be creating okay so let's just first create that variable 
the two variables, right? One for storing the single uh, contact record and the other one for the collection variable to store like you know, everything, all the contacts. So here, let's just take a variable and a single contact record, okay? And data type should be record. And here I'm not clicking on allow multiple values, right? Because I just want to store like single instance of the contact record, all right? And then object is contact. Uh, contact and then click on done okay and then let's just create another variable uh which is nothing but contact collection variable okay data type would be record and this will hold the multiple values okay because i would be adding here each and every contact okay so here it is so now we have the loop let's just create the let me just keep it here, okay? Now let me just create the assignment. So assignment. So what, what do we want to do in the assignment? We want to assign the first contact that the loop is iterating, iterating to that single uh, variable that we have created, right? For contact. So assign loop, uh, or you can say assign single contact, okay? And then here, what is the variable that we had created? We had single contact record, right? Single contact record dot account ID, right? Because on contact, we need to uh, assign the account ID, right? So account ID, where are we storing the account ID? There was, you remember that when we were cloning the account record, we had kept the uh, cloned account record ID into a variable, right? So that is the variable that we need to search here. So account See this one, right? Account ID of cloned account, okay? So this is the one. And then what else do we want to provide into the contact? Let's say um, first name and last name, both are required fields, right? So let's just provide those things. So here only this part we need to get from the cloned account, right? The account ID, but everything else we will get from the loop, okay? So current item, and then here first name, then uh, let's just give the last name last name okay this will also will get from the current loop okay last name here and that is it okay all right so these actually these are the values that we actually want to clone when or like you know want to stamp on the cloned contacts right the the the, the contacts that we are going to clone all right so that is why what i have done is because on the cloned uh, contacts as I if you remember I told you right that if you will not provide the account ID the contacts would be created but those would be orphan contacts okay but we what we want to do is we want to associate those cloned contacts to the cloned account that we have created right so that is why I had this is the variable that where I had stored the cloned account record ID and that is what I am providing here on the account ID of this instance all right and then first name and last name we will get from the loop because loop is already iterating over the contacts all right and then click on done so this all right yeah for each item and then uh all right okay so this is the first assignment now what else do we want to do we want to keep on adding every instance to the collection variable right so for that let's create another assignment so add to the add contact contact to the collection variable all right so here uh, what is the collection variable that we have created collection variable this was the collection variable that i have created okay and here we have to add and what do we have to add we have to add a contact collection variable not single contact record okay and that's it so when we are iterating uh, through the loop in the first assignment, we are assigning all the values and everything using this variable, okay, single contact record. All right, so this will hold the values of account ID, first name, last name for first contact, and then that will get added to this collection variable. Then when the loop, uh, like, you know, iterates to the second contact, then this will hold the values of the account ID, uh, first name and last name for the second contact. And then again, that will also be added to the collection variable. So basically, collection variable will have the details of contact one and also the details of contact two right so and then click on done all right and then let's just okay 
So here it is. Okay. Now, uh, so for every item in the loop, right? Every item in the in the like you know the for the get records elements, whatever we have got, like you know, for all the contexts, the loop will be iterating, uh, like you know, iterating through all the values or all the contexts that we have gotten here. So let's say it will iterate for the first one. It will assign this value and then add to the collection. Then for the second one, assign this value and then add to the collection. And so every time it has to go through here, right? So that is why we have to connect it here. Okay. So this is how the loop will run. So now once the loop gets actually completed, right? If there are two concepts, this will run two times. Okay. And once the loop is completed, what do we have to do? We have to create the context, right? Nothing but cloning the contact. So now you can actually create the contact. Okay, so create clone contacts. Okay, and then of course it's multiple, right? And what is the record collection, right? The collection variable where we have added all the contacts. So here, uh, this one, collection variable and click on done, okay? So once the loop is completed, it will just, after last item, right? After the like, you know, the loop is completed, it is going to create the records. Now let's also create a screen to show a message. So here, <clears throat> user screen three, and then uh, display text. Display text. Uh, success message. Account and content. Fact, cloning completed. Okay. And here, let's just make it, sorry, make it bold. All right. This is okay. Done. And done. And then that's it. Okay. So let's just go through this whole flow again and then we'll go ahead and try this in the arc and see if it's working or not. Okay, so <clears throat> this was the user confirmation asking like you know, whether the user want to uh, clone the account and its associated contacts or not. And here we were fetching the current account record. And here we are like you know giving the user the option to replace the account name so that they will be able to differentiate between the original account and the cloned account and then here <clears throat> we are creating the cloned account record and also storing its id to a variable right remember this because you would be needing this cloned account record id when you are cloning the contact records right to map it and then here we are fetching all the contact records here we are running a loop assigning every single contact to a variable and then assigning that particular variable to a collection variable and once like you know the loop is completed we are just like you know creating a record sorry creating contact records using that collection variable so basically the insert operation is happening on the collection variable okay and once it is done we are providing a success screen saying that the process has been completed all right so i'm going to save this and let's just name it as a uh, deep clone okay deep cloning because we are cloning account and its child contacts save and uh, let's just activate this let me go to this account and uh, let's just add that button here let me remove this detail page this like duplicated all right this as well Okay, so here, it's still loading here. I need to add that action, okay? So let me move my video here. So here, oh, sorry. Why is it not coming? Actions. Oh no, we have to create the action, right? We haven't created the action. So let's go to object manager, account uh, here and uh, Let's just create the action and let's call a flow, sorry, flow, deep cloning and name it as deep clone. All right, save it and let me refresh this. Let me first save this. 
and fresh. All right, here's an action and deep clone, right? And done. And this has a lot of them, so. Sorry for this. If you are like, you know, comfortable adding it anywhere, you can keep it. I'm just, I just want to show it as the first one. So deep clone and then save. Okay, now let's go back to the account page. So this is the account that I want to deep clone, right? So that means this account should be cloned along with phone number and annual revenue. And let me provide an annual revenue because these are the two fields that I've mapped while uh, cloning the contact, oh, sorry, account, okay? So I have phone number, I have annual revenue, all right whatever and then um, and two contacts right and in the contact i have only cloned account id and first name and last name so th that means when these two contacts are cloned those should be associated associated to the clone of this account and also they should be only copying the first name and last name right because that is all i have mapped so let's just click on deep clone and here next should provide me the yes uh cloned sorry deep clone account test right and then click on next all right finish and let's just go and search for that account so account and here it is right deep clone account so we have to check two things first thing is that if phone and annual revenue has been copied to this cloned account or not that's step number one step number two is to check if all the contacts has been copied over or not. If they have been, then if the first name and last name is stamped or not. So here it is. This is the phone number and this is the annual revenue. And you can see both the contacts here, right? First name and last name, because this is a name field, right? Which is a combination of first name and last name. And those are the only fields that are being copied, all right? So this was all about uh, deep cloning, right? I believe it is it is easier to understand if you understand all these steps, right? That how to fetch records, how to get the current record record ID, right? And then how to use this current record ID to in order to fetch the child records, and then how to loop over a list of records, right? And how to store it, how to like you know create a collection variable, how to uh, loop through all the elements and assign it to a single um, variable uh, like you know holding record and then like you know to a collection variable and then how to create those records so it's just like you know it's just if you if you like you know think step by step it is really very easy to understand and you will also like you know like you know it's like less likely to <laughs> commit any mistakes so I would suggest that like, you know, when you are doing it, just do not try to like, you know, just jump on steps and then try to execute or like, you know, add or minus the steps. I would say that at once go slow, understand each and every step and you will, you would not be required to watch the video again. Right. So it's better to understand because going like, you know, forward, if we are doing other complex examples or let's say like, you know, other scenarios, or let's say these are very basic flows, right? Let's say if if you fall into such a requirement where you have to create a, such a complex flow and you don't have understanding of these things, right? For example, loop assignments, variable collection variables, then it's going to be difficult for you, right? So keep practicing. I will be uh, creating another uh, video on next scenario that like, you know, whatever I have jotted down. So till then, bye-bye. Uh,